and I'm going to start by asking you a question. Who knows about DSC to start with? Good, 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 good. Okay, who knows what, who doesn't know what a DSC resource is? Okay, everyone knows what a DSC resource is. So the good thing is, then we can go much deeper if you want to, uh, which is great. Um, I will show you like a little bit, I started, I wasn't sure, so I say, okay, what's DSC and what's a DSC resource? I just wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page, but honestly, that's the only slide I have on this. Uh, you just need to understand, and I was, we, we were just discussing this, there's PowerShell DSC, and then there's the old DSC. So when people talk about DSC, there's many interpretations about what DSC is. You have DSC, so desired state configuration, it's an ecosystem where you have the DSC resources, uh, now uh, managed by the community. And then you also have DSC, the LCM, so the Local Configuration Manager, which is the agent, which is built in on Windows. But then you also have um, DSC, the DSL, so the Domain uh, Specific Language. And that's how you declare something. So it's a declarative language, so then you can say, hey, I want my node, my VM, to be configured in that state. Um, and then you have DSC, the pool server on the reporting, which is uh, services integrated in Windows up, into, up to uh, one of the latest Windows, but that's going to be discontinued as a system. So we can, I think, I think Raymond has a session on that, so you probably can talk more about what those services are. And you have Azure DSC, which is, um, which is Microsoft Azure uh, um, creating this pool server on the reporting and all the interface integrations around it for you. And then you have the new thing, which is um, Azure Policy Guest Configuration. So there's a lot of things when we talk DSC and we don't know which way it is. So I will focus on this session only on one tiny part of it, which is Azure Policy. And uh, specifically, Azure Policy uh, Guest Configuration Packages. And I will explain why, uh, but I'm not going to look at all the things. I just want to show you how to create DSC resources for Azure Policy, so how you can use that. Why would you want to use that, maybe? And uh, how to do that, literally looking at the code. So there's not that much slide. There's probably two more, and that's mostly what we've got in slides. So uh, you all know what a DSC resource is, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. And what is guest config? So you can go to that link, akl.ms, GC, Paul. Uh, you will have a good introduction, but I just took the sentence, which is auditor configure operating system settings as code. Same as we used to do in the old DSC, but this is the Azure integrated service. You define what you want to audit or what you want to set in code, in PowerShell code in this case. And then you have ways using Azure policy to apply it, to assign it to different VMs depending on the rules you want. On top of that, there's something which is new to DSC, which is uh, setting up parameters. So before when we had DSC, everything was written in the MOF and we couldn't change that, we couldn't modify that, we had to recompile a new morph. Slightly different now, we can have one morph and then we can uh, use parameters to change some of the value for those things. So, we have the policy that we apply, and this is Azure policy, I'm really focusing just on the package, so how do you create a package that then you can use in a policy, upload to Azure, and assign to the VMs. I'm looking mainly on the package, how do you want to write a DSC resource and create the package from that resource so that you can create your own packages and use them in your policies? When you have the package, creating the policy and applying it is pretty easy and the documentation is on the first link there, which you see, Paul. You can link to other documentations, but people sometimes know DSC a little bit, like you do, what, you know what DSC resources are. So I just want to take you from, you know DSC, let's go into creating a package, it's very familiar. There's a few things we need to do differently. There's some toolings to make it easier for you. And then uh, the other, you will have to do a bit of research for the assignment and the policy side. So let's just focus on the packages. So let's go straight to the demos. Okay. So I will go, um, I will go, when you have your package, yeah, I will show you what a package looks like, and then we will walk back, how do you get to the point where you can create, where you can uh, create this package and author it, and author the module that you need to use. So the first thing is, what is the, uh, what is the 
what is a uh, guest configuration package. A guest configuration package is a fancy zip file which got a MOF and all the DSC resources that you need to have to apply that MOF. So it's pretty simple, you just create a MOF, you just say, hey, that's my MOF, and we know how to do that with DSC, just a configuration script, and I want to build that MOF, uh, from that MOF I want to build a package. So it's gonna say, okay, which resource do you have declare, which module do you have declare, and, um, and then you will just pack everything into a fancy zip file, and there's a command for that to do that that does that for you. So I'm just gonna show you very quickly. I just have tasks for my module. Uh, if I can type, GC ball. So I'm just building a lot of things and obviously I have an error. Oh yeah, I know why. Okay, let me just demo codes always. <laughs> Has to. Okay, I won't do that. Let me just do this. Probably should have done that. Okay. Let's do it first. It's a little bit big for me to see. Oh, come on. It's good there's error so then we can troubleshoot. <laughs> right? Come on. Hey, that's probably why. There we go. So the first thing you can notice is, ah, did I open a new one? Yes, why do you do that to me? Why? Yeah, just, when, no, I don't want Windows PowerShell. Is it? Yeah, thank you. All right, better. Still not really up to date, I probably should have done that. But anyway, let's do this. And then I want to start by building my module. Doop, doop, doop. Ah, probably better. All right. So what I'm doing this, I'm just building my module. And this is my module created there, and you can see that's my module which has my PSM1. And in my PSM1, ah, come on. In my PSM1, I'll do this. In my PSM1, I have just different functions and DSC resource class. I will go into the details there before. And then what I've created is, I also have, if I build, if I compile my GC ball, that should work this time. Uh, come on. I'm not used to that resolution. <laughs> and then build that PS1, and then I will, just the task that wasn't working earlier, and go. So what I'm doing here with GC Paul, I'm just saying, hey, I want my policy packages to be built. Everything is automated in my pipeline. And it creates the MOF that I want to use, and then it will create the package as well, which is my fancy zip file here. So if we open in File Explorer, uh, it's not probably not gonna be very big, but basically you have, I don't know if you can see that, you have the modules here, and you have a MOF, and then some metadata used by the guest configuration agent. But there's nothing fancy about it. There's just the module I need, which is the one I just built, and there's the MOF. So if you think about guest configuration and you're already familiar with DSC, you can see that the package is what you need. The rest is some JSON definition, which is generated for you. You put that into Azure, you have your parameters, and then you can use that straight away. So all the knowledge you had with DSC is transferable with guest configuration. And all of this is automated for you. So the pipeline I'm using here, you can see like it does a lot of things and I'm not gonna go into the details, but all of those tasks are available to anyone to use. It's based on Sampler, which is what the DSC community is using. And uh, Raymond is doing a talk, I think on Thursday morning to uh, go about just the, all the pipelines on the tools. And then if you want to do DSC resources, you know, you can use that. That's why we use across 50 something uh, uh, DSC resource uh, modules. And if you want to compile your, your MOF and create your packages, it's already all available here. So everything I'm doing here, you can do exactly the same. You just define the task you want to run and then you just run them. So you've seen the package, it's just a fancy zip file with a lot of things. So you've seen the module, uh, which I, I just showed you. So how do we get to the MOF? So that's the DSC part, everyone's familiar with this. So we can look at 
the script configuration here. So that's my config, oops, sorry. That's a very, very simple DSC configuration. So if you're familiar, you have the configuration keyword here. You define, hey, that's my DSC configuration. Everything inside those curly brackets will be my uh, state definition. And then in this case, I just call uh, this, that's the name of the MOF that I want to have, but that's why I reuse the same name and the configuration in here. And I would just want to create that MOF, and then that's the MOF that will be the package name I use later. It's just a convention that I use. And then I'll use my um, DSC resource, which I created just for Summit here. And then the key name, which is again is not re very relevant. And then you have the path here, with the text. And then you have another property here. So path is my key in this case, and we will look into the DSC resource. All right, so I said that we will look at how this is built, but you can see that's a very simple configuration. From this, we can create the MOF, and we've seen the MOF being compiled here. So let me pin that one, and then let's see at the MOF. And we go to the output. It's already done for us. Oops, sorry. The MOF is there. And I have my MOFI, which I've been generated just now. So, so that's the MOF generated. You can see the instance of PS Summit. And you have the usual uh, properties plus the path and the content. All right. So that's the MOF that's been created from that configuration. But then let's look at the resources. So something you need to know when um, you talk about DSC, so D DSC in PowerShell Core, or PowerShell 7, sorry, I should not use Core anymore, old, old, old world. So PowerShell, in, uh, PowerShell 7, you need to make sure that uh, you, especially the new version, you are using a class-based resource. The old MOF-based resource is not supported and it's not going anywhere. MOF-based resource existed because when DSC was released with uh, Windows 2012 R2, that was a good way to just say, you know, SIM and WMI was exist existed at that time, and they, it was quicker to ship it that way. And then uh, we've been stuck with, uh, with this and the MOF format. Definitely, it's not going anywhere anymore. Uh, they tried to remove the management interface completely from PowerShell. So that's not a way forward. Class-based resource, it's much nicer. The contract is much better, and it's actually much easier to write. So let's first look at the module that we're using for this. So let's go into the module. So who's familiar with um, Module Builder? So Module Builder is a module uh, written by uh, Joel Bennett, and that allows you to have different files that will be, uh, you know, you can edit independently. You have one function per file, and then you assemble them into one PSM1, and that's what I'm using here. So in my sources, I have my classes file on each class as um, each class as one file. So I have my DSC resource file here. I have another one reason I'm gonna get into in a second. And then I also have functions. And in this case, I only have three public functions. So when you see this is that's the way I, I edit those and I store them. Module builder, which is you know, used in the pipeline, will automatically um, take all of those files and then merge them together in, in one PSM1, make sure the PSD one is updated as well, so it does everything for me. And then I have one PSM file, which is much easier to manage because we have separated files, but at the same time, it's easy, it's quicker to load, and it's in one file, so that's the source. But when I look at my output, so what is built, uh, you see that I have some data here. Submodules, I won't get into the details right now. But then I have my PSD one, which is here, and I will remove this, so then you can see you have different things. So the class is there, so you can see expanded. And then you have the reason I, I show you the file for, and then the get PS submit DSC, set, and obviously the test for this example. So everyone's familiar with DSC resources. Uh, there's another talk uh, by James Ruskin about, you know, add dependency. So the idea of DSC is just being able to get a resource, test the resource, and set the resource. But that means you always get to the same point. Yeah, you have a question. Yes, very good question. We're going to get into how do you write classes. So that's the class. 
why do I, so the question, if I can rephrase the question is, why do I use um, functions while I could use methods for my class? And actually I use methods because I have to, right? It's, and then what I'm doing is, yes, I'm calling my function there. So the, why do I do that? And that's a good question. Um, when you manage resources, there's two ways to approach the problem. So when you have a file, you can do imperact, in, uh, sorry, imperative type of action on it, set content, get content, which is exactly what I'm doing actually. Um, get content, set content, and you can test the content with a get content slash you know, match, and then the regex. Um, that's the same idea, but I use functions because sometimes I want to do it imperatively, like to validate if it works. It's much easier to test because then you, have a, you, are, uh, you just have the function you can test, and then you can test the DSC resource, so you can separate those. And for the, uh, if you use the methods, it's good, but basically DSC is just an interface for I dependency which puts together the get, set, and test. That doesn't mean you will never need uh, to use the functions in other cases. Very rarely. I very rarely debug because I go step by step and I will show you, I, I can uh, debug, well, I can troubleshoot just the function. If the function works, then I will try within the class. If the class works, I will try within the DSC resource. You have many ways to, to get to it. So it's much easier for testing. But that's getting a bit more deep into how you design those, and we can discuss that later. No worries. It's just a better approach. So traditionally, we used to put everything into the DSC resource, and it used to be the PSM1 in the DSC resources folder but uh, it's a much better way of uh, providing, you know, when you write a, f uh, a module that does all of those things, individual actions, imperative actions, are still very useful for your users. So it's best, in my opinion, to do both. And I will show you a bigger example later. All right, so that's the, that's the resource, and you have the get, set, test. Uh, you can see that by doing this, my resource, the resource itself, so that's interface with I dependency is only 56 lines long. Everything else is in the different uh, functions, which is, you know, everyone knows much easier to write. So even if you are the DSC person, if someone writes the PowerShell functions, you can use that to create your DSC interface, and then it's much easier to manage that resource that way. All right. No more questions? Good. Um, so why do I have reason here? So in Guest configuration, well, we found out a long time ago, but in guest configuration, we found out that you have some reportings, you have some information about um, you know, whether you're compliant or not compliant when you have a DSC resource, but you never know why. And the only way to know why usually is to go through the verbose output and find out why this resource is not compliant. So they thought, well, we should have a convention which is if something is not compliant, we should say why, and let's use something that can be displayed in the, um, in the uh, Azure Policy Guest Configuration web interface to say, yeah, there's a code and there's a phrase that will tell me what's wrong with it. So when you look at your reports in Azure, you see exactly why those resources are not compliant. So that's a very useful, and then that still applies to everything which we used to have before. It's the same principle. So you have, we have um, a pattern which is documented in the Guest Configuration uh, documentation. But the idea is whenever we do a get, if something is not compliant, let me just go through the code if I can expand. So we get the information, and then if it's not something we expect, in this case, if the file doesn't exist, well, I will add this reason that is returned with the get and says, hey, uh, I have my code, which is file not exist, and then this file was not found. And then I say which path of the file. So then even if you do a get on, the, on this uh, information, you realize that, well, I know why this wasn't work compliant. And I don't need to go back into the logs or the diagnostics or anything to find out why. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, second. Yes, and in this case, you see if, uh, so in this case, it will be, there's an else if, so it's gonna be only one, but uh, in more complex scenarios, and I probably can show you some, uh, you need to have much more details. So let's say you have a user, and the user have um, as many properties that uh, are not correct, 
you can have one entry for each property which is not compliant. So it, you can have much more detailed information that, hey, this is not the way it should be. And then you ask, okay, but why? Much easier to do that, that way, okay? All right. So now we talked about, so that's the thing we know. That's the old DSC, and technically class-based DSC resource also works. So all of those things on, on compiling, on using those modules, the way to uh, build this resource module, that's what we're doing. So if you want a good example, I think uh, the GA DSC is a good, um, it's a very good example because it's based on class-based resource. I don't know if they've updated to PESTA 5 testings, but like there's a lot of information. So if you go to github.com slash DSC community slash GEA DSC, that's a very good, uh, very good repository to understand and see you know, how the community is doing that. All right, so now that you have this, um, you've seen, so we've seen how to create a DSC resource, how to create the module, the module is compiled together, and then that's done by the automation, but you just put everything into one PSM1 file. We can find it, we can use it in the uh, DSC uh, configuration script. So from this DSC configuration script, we create the MOF, and from the MOF, we create the package. So how do we create the MOF, uh, the package, sorry? In this case, you don't see it, but there's the guest configuration module, which I will show you there. So if you do find module guest configuration, you will find, uh, actually, you should probably get the uh, latest version, which is the pre-release version. Um, there's some more work going on, I believe, these days. Um, but, uh, but if you look that on the gallery, if internet is with me, yes, I'm connected. Um, then th this, is a, this is a module you can download, and that helps you create the package. So there's a new package commandlet. You just say, hey, use this MOF, and that will just look in your uh, PS module path for the module required. Uh, with the right DSC resource, and it will just create the zip file for you. And then, um, just one more thing, and then you can also, you have other commands, which hopefully I will be able to show you, but I don't know why, okay, never mind. Thank you, internet. Uh, I already have it there, so I can probably do get module list. Guess configuration is there, so that's this, this version, only if I do import module, guess configuration, and then um, get command module. So you have, that, that's the commands that you have for uh, guest configuration. So you have new guest configuration package, you say, hey, create a new guest configuration package, this is my uh, MOF file, zip it up for me, and it's gonna do that for you. It's gonna leave also the unzip file. Um, then you can create, you can see you have new guest configuration policy, that's the things I'm not gonna cover today, but you have the same thing. W once you have your package, once it's uploaded somewhere, you can just say, hey, Azure, look at this package and create this policy for me. So then you can use it in your Azure, in your web interface. You can sign, uh, you can send your package if you want to, and then you also have uh, to publish the configuration package. So put it somewhere. And then uh, the policy as well, so telling to Azure, hey, this is my policy with the parameters. And you can also, and those are the ones we're gonna cover today, the start guest configuration package remediation. So that's doing the set scenario with a package. So you have a package, you audit, so you're doing the get configuration package compliance status. It says, hey, I'm not compliant. If the package is enabled for Remediation, that means doing the set, you know, like you do in DSC, you change something, you just say, hey, remediate that for me, and it will just make it so, which is the beauty of DSC that we all know of. I'm not gonna get into that because I'm not gonna get into the policy side of things. I'm, I'm not gonna get into the parameters because it's a bit more advanced. But the idea is, uh, it's possible, yes. So the idea, I will go back to the MOF, so then I will explain what's possible. Uh, if we look at oh, the MOF or the uh, package source, that works too. So you can see my DSC resource here. You have the path and the content here, right? That is 
fixed and static in this, uh, in this document. This is not a variable, it's not something we change. If you create that, you create the morph, you create the package, you know, that's, that's never gonna change, but when you create your policy, you can say, hey, those things can be parameters. So then when you go and do the assignments, when you do these uh, within your, um, within your uh, Azure web interface, you can say, hey, that's the parameter and that's the values I want to have. So when you, when you create those policy, when you create the policy in the package, you can say, hey, those are parameters. It's static because, yeah, that's the old way we think about it, and we think it's static. It's not static anymore with a guest configuration. But then why, why have the models in there? You need to have something. That's, okay. You need to have something. That's why you need to have something, the value, so then you can reference that value to change it. Okay. That's why. Yeah, so remember that while we have this, a lot of the things that we've seen, the compilation process and everything is backward compatible with you know, what we use with uh, DSC v5 or uh, in PowerShell 5. So you need to have it backward compatible, so you need to put something here, otherwise it would not compile. So that's why you also have the challenge. So the, the node that you define there doesn't actually reference anything? No, yeah, the node is definitely not used. In this case, it's just to get uh, the MOF name the way, the way I want. So then I use that MOF to, for the name of the package, so then it's easier uh, for me to just reference that. Just a question, so I'm not familiar with Azure Guest configuration or uh, policies. Uh, is this like an alternative or a, uh, a replacement for, like say, group policy in a traditional AD environment? Um, it depends. It's the same question that we always had with DSC. Okay, is DSC a, replace, a replacement for, um, for you know, uh, yeah, group policy or anything? Uh, is it, it can be. Um, for most of the things, maybe not for everything. You know, you always have things which are slightly different. User, user preference is an example. There's always a challenge and there's always a balance. The benefit there is this is code, much easier to define. And then you have data, which also means that you can, you know, set the data and, and organize it in a different way. It's not a click-click thing. Uh, you can make it a click-click thing as well. It's very good for experimenting, discoverability as well, because through the, through the Azure uh, UI, you can go and click and find those policies, but then you can also use code by set and things like this to apply. So with Azure Guest, you, you could use group policy, but this is sort of an alternative with that? So there's no competition, yeah, there's no, it's different. So there's no competition between those things. So between Azure Automation DSC and this, there's no conflict because it's a different agent. It's still using an agent, but it's different. You can use that on-prem and other uh, cloud, uh, through Azure Arc as well. But that's the part I'm not going to talk about, or I'm trying not to talk about. <laughs> and hopefully, uh, so the, the PM is uh, Jody Boone, and I believe she's going to swing by tomorrow or maybe Thursday. So uh, when she's there, I'm going to wave to everyone so then you can see uh, and introduce her. And Jason will do as well, right? We're going to connect her somewhere, and, and then hopefully yeah, she can present herself. Um, but I'm just trying to focus on, you know, uh, you know what DSC resource is, let's build a, a, a package, and that's what we've done so far. So now we need to test the package. And I said, we're gonna do that for Linux. So this, um, let me show the code again. This module is very basic and very dumb. It just looks at a file, make sure the file has the right content based on the key, right? So um, if we look at uh, the functions here, I'll show you the set. The set is just looking, you know, I have a path parameter, a content parameter, which is just, you know, what we use in a file. This is just a dummy function because it's very simple to write and you can understand, you know, what we can do with it. So now I said I want to do that on Linux, but I've been editing everything on Windows right now. And I use something, I don't know, who's familiar with Test Kitchen? No one? I know. So, uh, yeah, you know. Um, uh, I think the first... A session in PS Summit that's been done was maybe in 2014 by Stephen Muraski. And, and for me, there was like aha moment where you know how you can test on different VMs. So we created the package. So we created the package. It's there. Uh, no, it's not there. It's there. That's my GC package. That's my fancy zip file. I know my package is gonna set a f it's going to set a file the way I want, and I want to be able to test it. So I need to write a best test that validates this for me. So I wrote that for you. So if I go to my tests here, 
and I've put them nicely. I, I may have unit tests in this case. At the moment, I don't, just to make it quicker. But then I can show you my test for this. You remember the guest configuration module I showed you? There's a few functions you can use. In this case, there's the get configuration package compliance status. Say, hey, run this package. It's got the morph, it's got the module, it doesn't need anything else. So as long as you update the package, you say, hey, get me the compliance status for that one, sorry. And then, then you can just uh, look into the VM and say, hey, am I compliant or not? And then you return the value, and then you can say, hey, is the compliance status true or false? And in this case, the first time around, it should be false. And then we can say, well, it was false, so let's try to remediate it. So let's start the remediation, and then get, uh, do another get to make sure that we get the latest value, and then this time it should be true. All right? But, so if I go here, uh, actually, I just need to load my secrets for test kitchen. And then I have my kitchen command, which is kitchen create, kitchen convert, kitchen verify. In this case, I just run the verify. Oh, I, I'm, I'm going to show you the list there. So kitchen is a tool that you use to say, hey, I have these things I want to test, and that's whether it's DSC or whether it's PowerShell or whether it's anything, it was created by the chef community originally to test just chef resources. Same principle here. What I want to have is, okay, um, that's the VM I already created. You can see the driver I use. Uh, the provisioner is shell. We'll get into more details. And then you see the verifier is pester. So basically it says, hey, take those tests, push them into a new VM created on this driver, in this case it's Azure RM, so it's going to be on Azure. And do that, transfer all of this over SSH, run that pest of things for me, and tell me the result. So, kitchen, oh. so let's verify this. Uh, if I can type, there we go. So all of those things is just um, zipping up everything I have, pushing it over SSH, so I see copy kind of thing, installing Pester on the remote VM, and then running the test for me. And then one of the tests, the package is available, it's running, you know, the uh, guest configuration module command now, it fails, oh, it fails, I know why. In this case, I did it before. And because I did it before and run that before, if you remember my test, it's already fixing it, but I'm not removing the fix. So I'm gonna, so it failed, my test failed, which is good, never trust, never trust a test that never failed, right? But um, in this case, okay, how do we do that? So let me just delete my remote VM. So kitchen, destroy. So delete my remote VM. It's going to take some time. That's why I wanted to prepare it before. And then we will, so it, it's doing it. It's, it's tearing it down. And then I will do again a verify. And now you will see it's creating a new resource group. It's deploying my resource group. Now we need to wait for the VM to spin up. It's a Linux VM. It's a Ubuntu VM. And then uh, it needs to set it up. So I need to have PowerShell installed, which when you spin up a new VM, you don't necessarily have PowerShell. It depends on your image or what you're using. In this case, I don't, so I will have to run some commands on this remote machine to install PowerShell, which is all automated with Test Kitchen. Then it will make sure the provisioning is done. In this case, it's just installing the guest configuration module for me. And when that's done, it will do the verifier, which is what we just saw, um, zipping up the package, pushing it to the remote VM, running Pesta. So it's gonna take maybe a minute. Uh, so you see, I finished deploying my VM. I, I guess it's waiting for the VM to be available. In this case, on SSH, that should not take too long because the Wi-Fi is good so far. You see, I have my public IP address there. That's why I don't trust it at all because it's quite open. But at least it's there. Oh, you see, connection failed, connection failed. There you go, connection succeed. Went over SSH, automatically running the commands I asked, which is installing PowerShell and you know, all the dependencies. Updating, there we go, setting transport. There's a, a few more things to be done. I will show you the configuration done. 
but that's a Ubuntu machine. And you see unpacking PowerShell, setting up PowerShell. That's the latest version, but you can pin version, you know, how you want to, to have. And that's running on Ubuntu. But then think, if you want to test on Ubuntu, CentOS, whatever, or the distro, well, you can do the same, the same thing, you just have to have different platforms, so different uh, VMs that you want to have. And then those different VMs, you can just run the same thing, and it will automatically do in parallel, as an example. You just say, hey, do all of those on test, so then you have consistency across different distros. So that's the provisioning step, which is in this case is just installing uh, PSDSC 205, not the guest config, guest config later, I guess. And uh, you can see that's the logging, uh, uh, yeah, logging from, it's Test Kitchen logging in into that remote VM. And now it's doing the best test we did before, and then the one, this one should uh, be green because we haven't polluted this environment yet. I haven't touched the keyboard since we started that. So it takes a little bit of time because you need the time for speed up the VM, do those things. And there we go. Do, do, do. So that's the, I should have actually turned off the verbos thing, but. Yeah, go ahead. Um, you can, but you may not want to. It depends what you're managing. So technically you can, it depends on the provider you're using. So uh, Azure RM doesn't, is not really helpful for containers, but you have other providers which are specifically for uh, containers. The reason I say it's not always useful is because containers are very specific, so you may not have some services or some configurations. If I want to, man to create DSC resource that manages VMs, I'd rather have a real VM because then I can really control the end-to-end -end process. And I'm not gonna be, oh, it's a different because it's a container type of things, you know, system D configuration or something like this, which may not be relevant in the container. <coughs> but in, yeah, in theory, yes, if you're just managing packages, an example, or testing uh, some packages, makes sense, quicker, definitely try that, yes. So you see that one is actually all test passed because it wasn't polluted, so that worked. So when I'm done with it, well, you saw that before, kitchen, destroy. But uh, what we can do as well is, oops, just, just for fun, when you troubleshoot, that's very useful, you just log into that VM, uh, you look at the password, so I will show you my kitchen configuration and why my password is there like this. So I will actually, I will do it nicely. Technically it's there. Uh, if I can find it, so you see my password is here. I'll copy that. Yes, um, and then copy that here, and then enter. And you see I'm logged in here, so sorry for that. And then you can do, the, uh, sorry, not kitchen. I'm already on the VM, right? So I just do sudo pwsh tala. I'm on my Linux VM, and I'm on, uh, and I'm on my uh, PowerShell session now. So I can do troubleshootings, and I can find uh, my stuff is in, I can't remember, a tab, kitchen, and then I have my provisioning script that we did, we showed before, and then you have, I forgot where the other one is, but when you do troubleshooting, it's useful to, to have access to the modules that have been copied over on the packages, so then you can do the test. Uh, uh, I forgot where it is. Bar temp, and I think it's, mm, I'll get back to it. N not really important for, for this demo, but then you have access to the thing, so then you can run the commands, and this is where it's important to have impressive commands. Much easier to run the command and check what's happening when you do this. All right, so far so good. Any question? Does that make sense? Okay, so that's pretty simple because that's a very, very um, simple module package and everything's integrated. Let's uh, maybe look at very quickly, the different, uh, so when I run, when I build my module, you see I did build.ps1, which is my entry point, and then I have different tasks. So let's look at what type of task I have, uh, but we're not gonna spend too much time because uh, that's exactly what uh, Raymond will cover in his session about sampler. So basically, we have a configuration file, which is the build YAML, and then we say, hey, you have, we have different workflow. One is just build, which is the also 
So when it's built, what it does is just clean my local environment, build my using module builder, and then build nested modules if any. I don't I won't go into the details, but then what we've done is also GC Paul, which is similar things, but also build guest configuration packages. And then we also have a clean unzip GC packages. It's just a, a quick one that we created there just to remove a directory to avoid pollution in your environment. There's a lot of things going on in the build automation, but you can reuse it the same way. So you just have, uh, you do sampler, sampler is using um, a plaster. So if you're familiar with templating, you just say, hey, I want a new template. It brings up your template, you have some configuration change to do, and then you can automatically, you can very quickly create your module, just add your functions, your class, the SC resource, and then you add a new folder for your GC packages, create a, a configuration script, and here you go, you can compile your uh, guest configuration package. Now let's look at, uh, when you've done this, let's look at Kitchen. I said, oh, Kitchen is there, great, but where does it got all of this information? Well, this is the file that you need to have. Kitchen is a Ruby-based application that uses gems, so some libraries, so basically you install uh, Ruby on your machine, you do gem install, so installing the libraries, there's three libraries to get, uh, Kitchen, a test kitchen, kitchen tester, and uh, kitchen Azure RM, which is the driver, and that's all you have to do. Then you can run those things. That's the definition of my platform. I say, hey, I want to have this Ubuntu. I have my image URN, can I call Ubuntu server? That's the definition in Azure to say, hey, that's the image I want to use. <coughs> and then I want, when it's created, so when you've already created the VM, so when it's pin up the VM on Azure, you say, hey, I want to run those commands on the machine. And that just literally a copy paste from the PowerShell documentation that says, hey, that's how you install um, uh, PowerShell on those VMs. Then you can have more complex things. Uh, you can have very powerful and very complex um, module. So let's look at something I'm working on. And then, I won't have much time on it, but it's much more complex, so. And that's gonna be open source, so, uh, open source very soon, as soon as I have time. Uh, and it's gonna be under the Azure, so I work for the uh, Microsoft team, and the guest configuration team, and I'm creating this content, which is managing Linux uh, with DSC, especially with guest configuration using DSC resource uh, for any, not anything but a lot of basic things on Linux. So what do we have is we have NX Tools module and you can find it already in the gallery. There's a new version coming up pretty soon and it will be open source as well on uh, uh, github.com slash Azure slash NX Tools. You will see it soon. And you have different packages already available. Installed application Linux, Linux root must exclude, password policy and some other things. And what's important is to look at the source. There's a lot of things going on there. Let me just check that. A lot of things going on, and you have different classes, and then you can go very deep into the different classes you have. You can use nesting, and then you can be very, you know, you can be very complex, but very interesting, because you can define a lot of things. So you can have an X package, so when you want to, you know, whether you use apt-get or whether you use yum, you can have just a, a simple interface using the NX package resource, so then you can make sure you install a given name, like a package on any type of distro. And then you can use Test Kitchen, as I showed you, with more type of VMs, so where's my kitchen file? Here we are. And you have same driver provision of verifier, but then you can have many more <coughs> platforms and suites. So uh, you can see I have Ubuntu, CentOS, and Debian and they have slightly different uh, configuration, like this one needs uh, some fancy uh, password because of sudo, and there's no sudo files configured when you spin up the new VM, so you have to do the, this gymnastic. But as soon as this is available, then you can just copy-paste, and then you have a, a, a template you can use very quickly. Does that make sense? Hopefully there was not too much. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to grab me. I'm here all week. And uh, thank you very much for coming. Any questions?